China City volunteers returned to Zhejiang to care for flood survivors in Lubu Town. We look back to the history of the Tsiji office in Hong Kong in celebration of their 20th birthday. Welcome to Dar Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in China, in the aftermath of Typhoon Fatal, Yuyao city of Zhejiang province suffered massive flooding. Following their aid distribution on October 13th, city volunteers once again returned to Gu Chao Tou village of Lubu town for another survey, where they also offered the survivors daily necessities and emotional support. Here at Gu Chao Tou village in Yuyao city, Two weeks after the floods, soaked furniture is still left uncared for. This solitary senior simply cannot clean up her house by herself. The massive floods displaced countless families, such as this resident from Hunan, who accidentally got separated from her children while fleeing the floods. Everything is fine now, you are safe, that's what matters. Following the massive floods, city volunteers once again returned to conduct a disaster survey. In the past, the low-lying areas of Yuyao suffered flooding from time to time. However, this time, the flood waters reached one story high, overwhelming the unprepared local residents. As the flood waters came, we thought the situation wouldn't be too serious. However, the water kept flooding in and getting higher, so we went to the second floor. We felt so helpless to see the first floor submerged underwater and not being able to do anything about it. Countless immigrant workers in the community suffered great losses in the disaster. During their disaster survey, city volunteers approached them with much-needed emotional support. Our greatest blessing is our safety. Such a natural disaster is inevitable. No one can prevent it from happening, not even the government. Now that we are safe from the disaster, we are still capable of rebuilding homes and restoring our life to normal. As the disaster survey concludes, city volunteers meet with local government officials to plan their next aid distribution for residents here. Also helping flood survivors are city volunteers in Thailand who have been providing hot meals to those in Pachanburi province after a devastating flood. Recently, the volunteers arrived at Chachon Sao province once again, only this time with water purifiers and medical supplies. The recent torrential rains in Thailand devastated the low-lying area of Cha Chong Sao province. Today, city volunteers and local county head are conducting a disaster survey. However, water is too deep. Our cars cannot get to many areas. The highest water levels were around 2 to 2.5 meters. It will probably take at least a month for the water to recede. To help, the local government has sent out troops to deliver daily necessities. As residents are living in an unsanitary environment, clean drinking water and medicine are desperately needed. Hospitals need clean water to clean up medical equipment. Right now, the tap water is not that clean, so we can't drink it. Upon receiving the news, volunteer Zhuang Li Zhong arrived at the disaster zone with 20 water purifiers. We will set up water purifiers in community offices or temples. After all of them have been set up, members of the public will have access to clean water. Prajing Bori was also affected by the floods. Thankfully, water has started to recede there. For nearly a month, more than 200 volunteers have been mobilized to hand out more than 16,000 hot meals to flood survivors. To help those suffering from the flood, government officials and residents from Lubori province, which Tsuji helped in the 2010 flood, arrived at the disaster zone with food and relief items. <laughs> I know that city volunteers have set up a service booth here. I miss the volunteers' love and care. That's why I'm very supportive of city. 
Besides delivering goods, many also volunteer to prepare hot meals for flood survivors. Instead of using disposable utensils, volunteers thoughtfully wrap the delicious meals and their blessings in banana leaves to make sure no harm will be added to our Mother Earth. Following a 7.1 magnitude earthquake in Boho province of the Philippines on October 15th, Manila and Cebu City volunteers immediately conducted disaster surveys in the affected areas. Apart from handing out blankets and consolation cash, three team members were also on site to provide medical assistance to the residents. The big writing on the board voices out the needs of Boho's residents. Although the aftershocks are not so frequent, residents are still too afraid to return home. When the earthquake hit, everything in my house was broken by the quake. There have been many aftershocks. I am too scared to take my kids home. So we've been staying inside this tent. We lack food and water, and each time it rains, we get wet. What remained after the tremor were collapsed buildings and a desolate scene. Of the towns affected, these five were the worst hit. Hence, Manila and Cebu City volunteers quickly mobilized to conduct disaster surveys and distribute consolation cash. A free clinic was also held for the residents of Antiquera. I'm so thankful that you came here to provide medical assistance. As many residents suffered injury during the crack, the hospitals are overcrowded with patients needing medical attention. Your presence will help us a lot. As roads leading to the other towns were destroyed in the quake, residents weren't able to seek outside help. This 11-year-old boy who was injured during the quake only managed to receive stitches for his wound when the team of doctors arrived. The roads are all damaged from here into town. He was wounded by a falling brick and we weren't able to get treatment. Fortunately, you are holding a free clinic today, allowing him to get stitches for his injury. Residents will eventually recover from their physical injuries, but for Agnes, the pain of losing her loved ones may be harder to leave behind. I never imagined that I would lose my parents in this quake. I am filled with grief and I wanted to join them. But I still have my siblings to take care of, so I will live on with courage. Since the earthquake, I haven't been able to sleep at night. My house was built with my hard-earned money, which I saved over the years. It was gone in an instant. I can't believe it. In four towns over two days, Tiji volunteers distributed consolation cash to 646 residents and provided medical services to 135 people. After this round of disaster surveys and distributions, volunteers will survey the schools in the area in order to prepare for the next step. Staying in the Philippines to help children resume classes as soon as possible following the end of the political unrest in Zamboanga, the City Foundation will provide 160 prefabricated classrooms to the city. Some 50 city volunteers gather at Taizong's Holy Liaison Office each day to assemble the first batch of steel structures, which they hope to send off on November 7th. City volunteers work together to assemble a first batch of ready-cut light steel frames. As this is the volunteers' first attempt, inevitably there will be small mistakes, such as the position of the screw. However, volunteers immediately work to rectify any errors. Once the basic steel structure is assembled, next volunteers work on the roof. Volunteers climb up ladders to carefully secure the upper frames in place. Support is very important as there might not be water or electricity there. Without electricity, it will be difficult to use any tools. So we have to ensure that they can easily set up the classrooms using basic tools and without a need for complicated electrical equipment. As Zamboanga of the Philippines is still currently without electricity and water, all preparations need to be completed in Taiwan. So once these mobile classrooms arrive in the Philippines, local volunteers can easily assemble the classrooms. The team overseeing this task are city volunteers from central Taiwan, and they aim to complete the 160 prefet classrooms within 35 days. 
Each classroom is approximately 76 square meters and can accommodate between 60 to 70 students. Volunteers are working around the clock to ensure that the first batch of prefab classrooms will be ready to sail on November 7th from Taichung Port. As this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Tsuji Hong Kong chapter, today we look back to the history of the establishment of Tsuji's offices in the territory. Here's more. Gaolong Tong Station is one of the most important transportation hubs in Hong Kong. This is also where the Tsuji Hong Kong chapter is located, and its harmonious atmosphere forms a contrast to its surrounding environment. Our early liaison on office and on Wanzai was really small. When we held events where over 30 volunteers participated, everyone felt cramped. The master reminded us to look for a new place when we could. Besides placing an emphasis on natural ventilation and lighting, the Buddhist NGO was also determined to protect the chapter's surrounding environment, including trees. Tsuji volunteers found the new location by coincidence, but at first the owner did not want to sell. The owner apologized to us and said her lawyer had already promised to sell it to someone else. I told her if you sell it to them, it will only be a commercial sale, but it would be different if you sell it to Tsuji. This would be a ground for cultivating bodhisattvas who sees every day to do good deeds. I even told her to sell it to us for a cheaper price instead of the market price because we had no money. In 1997, the year Hong Kong was returned to China, Tsuji volunteers formally moved into their new home on Sufolk Road in Gaolong Tong in celebration of the coming millennium. However, in 2002, due to the old structure of the building and the construction work in the surrounding area, the walls inside the chapter house started to crack and the floors started to tilt at an angle. Though plans were made to build a new chapter house, Tiji's charity work had to continue. Upon learning that volunteers were searching for a temporary office, Master Ray Long decided to help by giving Tiji a temporary home in Taiwan. What no one expected was that the Tsihang Nunnery, a famous Buddhist organization in Hong Kong, would later donate what had become the Daiwei Liaison Office to Tsiji Foundation. I remember at that time, Dharma Master Ray Rong called the Tsihang Nunnery and asked the board of directors to donate it to Tsiji. The master told them, we have looked every day and still can't find a location. By 2006, the construction work on the Gaolong Tong chapter was complete and city volunteers moved back in May of the same year. The Daiwei Liaison Office remained open and running and a recycling education centre was also set up there. Many say that Hong Kong is a very money-oriented and materialistic society, yet this long history here tells me otherwise. To show their support, many volunteers are really devoted to Tsuji's charity work and always give selflessly wherever and whenever they can. Over the past two decades, I have witnessed the personal development of many bodhisattvas. Having finally found a place to call home, Hong Kong city volunteers have proved over the past 20 years, through the country's transfer of sovereignty and the SARS epidemic, that their love and care is here to stay. Through the passing of time and the ups and downs city volunteers experienced in search for a home of their own, what has always remained the same is the volunteers' determination to spread the Buddhist NGO's work far and wide. 
Also in Hong Kong, Nix we meet city volunteer Yao Jiaqian, who took on a vegetarian diet after he joined the Sign Language Musical of the Water Repentance Sutra. Though the volunteer changed jobs four months ago and worked on a construction site, he not only remained committed to his meatless diet, but also convinced some of his co-workers to go vegetarian on the 1st and 15th of every lunar month. Four months ago, Yao Jiaqian switched from computer repair to construction work. The heavy lifting in 40-degree weather was at times unbearable, but he got through by chanting the sutra to himself. When the sun is at its strongest, sometimes I feel like I can't even breathe. It is then that I see the part of the sutra, life after life, on the path to enlightenment. As a participant of the upcoming musical, Yao maintains a strict vegetarian diet, the only member of his construction team to do so. However, others have paid notice and now a few will go vegetarian two days a month. I'm an example of how going vegetarian doesn't rob you of your strength. I told my co-workers that on the first and 15 days of each lunar month, they should eat vegetarian, and a few have done so. Although work is tiring, Yao still makes it a point to practice his sign language daily, whether at home or commuting. I downloaded a PDF file of the hand movements to my phone and will practice on the way. Of course, I keep my movements small so not to disturb others. Come the conclusion of the musical, Yao has decided to travel to Taiwan, fulfill his dream of becoming a full-fledged city volunteer. Li San in central Taiwan is famous for its flowers, vegetables and waterfalls. The location is also a tourist destination for those looking to get away from the city. However, in the same breath, those living here in the mountains often have to travel quite a distance to get to medical attention. In 2012, Taizong City Hospital's Chinese Medicine Department began carrying out bi-weekly trips to Li San to provide residents here with acupuncture therapy to ease their aches and pains. The road leading to Li Shan in Heping District, Taichung, is not always open or safe to travel on, as Taichung City Hospital Chinese Medicine practitioner Zheng Yizhe has come to know. We are taking this path, although it's a roundabout way, but it's safe. We only have to look out for high winds and icy roads in the winter. Previous to the city hospital Chinese medicine practitioner's arrival, announcements were made to alert local residents of the upcoming free clinic. Here in Lishan, the public health center leans more towards Western medicine. So Zhiji's Chinese Medicine Department is a much-needed area for many of the residents looking for a long-term solution to their chronic pains. Many of the local residents work on the mountain for a living, and their heavy labor lends itself to many chronic problems. We do a lot of strenuous work like harvesting and transporting pears around, so our shoulders and arms are prone to aches and pains. The weather here leans towards wet and cold year-round. When it gets cold or in winter season, joint problems flare up and are more apparent. Herbal Chinese medicine and acupuncture can help ease joint pains. For those residents unable to get to the free clinic venue, the team also makes home visitations. <laughs> <laughs> Every two weeks, we hold a free clinic at a fixed destination. Meanwhile, local city sisters and the Li San police station chief will conduct home visitations when we are not here. After the 921 earthquake, many of the roads connecting us to the outside collapsed and resources were unable to get to this mountain region. I'm very grateful Ziji has come here.
a public announcement was once again made to spread the word of Tsuji's bi-weekly Chinese medicine clinic. This is our second fixed free clinic site in the Yisan area. It is at the Huanqin Temple in Pindan Borough, which is about 40 minutes away from the Yisan by car. The regular free clinic is great. We don't have to travel down the mountain to see a doctor. In Taiwan's Taizong, Tsuji volunteers have been caring for 93-year-old solitary senior Mr. Liu for the past six years. Recently, the senior broke his left hand and was in need of surgery. To help, Tsuji volunteers accompanied the senior to a hospital and also settled him at a nursing home afterwards. Care recipient Mr. Liu broke his left hand and Tsuji volunteers are here today to accompany the senior to the hospital. <laughs> Surrounded by Tsuji volunteers' loving care, Mr. Liu sheds tears of happiness. Although Mr. Liu has to undergo a surgery, with Tsuji volunteers by his side, he's not afraid anymore. The bone may not stay in place if he isn't careful enough because of his old age. While Mr. Liu was hospitalized, the volunteers insisted on visiting him every two days. Since 93-year-old Mr. Liu has difficulty hearing, volunteers thoughtfully write their greetings on pieces of paper. For the past six years, Tsuji volunteers have been treating the senior like their own family. Touched by the volunteers' unconditional love and care, under the witness of a lawyer, Mr. Liu names Tsuji as his beneficiary. When I'm happy, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Laughing out loud and enjoying his time with the volunteers, Mr. Liu says becoming a giver has brought him tremendous joy. Moving to Hualien to give children living in the remote area the chance to embrace the world of books, Kaohsiung City volunteers bought 73 sets of Jinsu publications and donated them to 30 school libraries in Yulin. Medical staff at the Tsuji Yuli Hospital in Taiwan welcome entrepreneurs from Kaohsiung with an indigenous dance. Touched by the medical staff's determination to safeguard the health of residents living in the remote areas, this group of entrepreneurs decided to donate 73 sets of Tsuji publications. <laughs> These medical staff and Tsuji volunteers are filled with compassion. Their budget is limited, so all of us decided to donate these books and deliver them to Yuli. Hospitals can cure patients' illness, but what about their mind? Through today's book donating event, we hope to pass on Mr. Zheng Yan's words of wisdom to members of this community. We hope they can have the chance to absorb the master's dharma. To express his gratitude to the entrepreneurs, superintendent of the hospital Zhang Yuling presents them with the book Well-Being Love. The Tsuji publication will be donated to 30 school libraries in Yuli to give more children the chance to embrace the world of books. Back to Hong Kong at the end of today's show, as the musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra will come alive today, staff working on setting up the stage and equipment seized every odd moment to ensure the smooth running of the event, including a group of city volunteers from Taiwan who arrived early to help. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.